Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, my most beloved uh, viewers? It's such joy to bring to you shows after shows, because in the end, if all of us are enriched by it, our lives change. If we are reminded as to who we are, that in Islam, there's no dichotomy. There's no Islam only in the mosque. There's Islam at home, and also, need I say, in the workplace. In our interaction with people throughout the world, one of the huge challenges from employees and employers is, you know, I don't know what to do at work. I have people that work for me whose loyalty I question. There are people in the workplace who have issues amongst themselves. Then an employee says, you know what? I've been there for 30 years. I've got no recognition. I'm treated like dirt. I know all of you may be going through some of those challenges, but there is an answer. There is a solution. And today, need I say, I'm blessed as I've always been blessed with very erudite and wonderful panelists. So I want to begin with you, uh, Mohammed. First, you're looking smart in that suit, you know, the coat. I like it. <laughs> Mohammed, when you think of this topic, issues in the workplace, what comes to your mind? First things first, Uncle Idris. Idris, we've got to take stock of ourselves as businessmen, entrepreneurs, and leaders of our companies. Think about it. An employee is not just an employee. A tea girl is not just a tea girl. They are living, breathing, important pillars of structure that our entire civilization is built on. They are not just cogs in, a, in, a, in, an, in an entire massive machine or system. They are the machine that does everything. Business is a team sport. And that's my advice. If we need to understand, as employers, business is a team sport. You know, uh, Mohammed, uh, I like what you are saying. I mean, it's quite clear to me, I like to believe that you are one such employer because it's very important that the people that you work, work for you are given dignity. And how important is that, uh, Aman? It's extremely important. And coming um, from a slightly different background to my two colleagues uh, who are sitting on either side of me, uh, I come from a bigger corporate. And uh, one of the key things in terms of um, <clears throat> just highlighting the importance of what you say is that we follow a certain set of missions uh, uh, and values that the corporate themselves imbue. So as Muslims, when we look at these values, we like to internalize them and look at the Islamic relevance of these topics. And in most cases, most of these values are actually Islamic values because these are the building blocks of life. So when we come to the workplace, the thing that strikes me is that what can we do to make it easy for our employees to be highly productive people of the team? Because at the end of the day, they are assets in the business. And like any other business, you need your asset to be highly productive. So we need to do whatever we need to do to ensure that these assets deliver to us whatever we require. So, I, you know, the again, you're also emphasizing the word asset, right? You know, but mm -hmm. in some quarters, for example, uh, people commodify people. They said, well, as you said, they are cogs in the machine. Mm -hmm. They're serving here a purpose. Not cogs in the machine. Yeah, but they're, but they're saying, I'm just saying, yes. they're, they're, but they are not cogs. That's what I'm saying. They, they are they, the machine. They are the machine themselves. And I won't even use the word machine. Again, that dehumanizes them. I would say they are blood, spirit, and soul that they have, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, Mobin, from your uh, experience in terms of the corporate world, and when you talk about issues in the workplace, uh, what are some of the issues you feel that are current and things that perhaps it will resonate with the viewers when you talk about it, you know? I think for a lot of people, they aspire to have a greater growth um, vision of their, of, their, of their working environment, and many people may not achieve that. Uh, you know, they may work for a long period of time and not get to where they want to get. And a lot of the time, it's maybe they would require a coach. I mean, I use a coach for multiple things in my life so that I can be a greater leader. And it may require that they need a particular 
um, skill or support structure to help them get to where they want to get to. But you get two types of issues. You get the you know the day-to-day -day issues where people don't get along in this communication. And then you get the deeper issues where you have a strategy and people don't align to it, or they don't have the passion, or they're not happy with what they're doing. And all these things create issues. So more than that, what I find in my, in my own business, if I have somebody that is not passionate about what they're doing, then it creates an array of issues. And they're very difficult to rectify these issues because the passion is the energy that creates that momentum to drive this business. So they create that unhappiness within themselves purely because it's not what they want to do. So okay. you'll find that as a root of a lot of the issues that you may face. You know, uh, you raise many issues, but one of the issues that you raise, and I want to talk about this, the issue about your own personal growth. Uh, there is this notion, you know, I'm the employer, I have the monopoly of knowledge. I don't need to grow. I do not need to understand how other con or other industries work. For example, you find the only permanent thing in life is change. Yet we find that we have not changed. We are static, as it were. How important is it for you, in the position that you hold, for you to grow so that you better understand yourself, understand the company, and most importantly, understand those individuals who spend so much of the time in your company. So Idris, the core element of empathy in the comment that you just made now is that I too was an employee at one stage in my life. And the ladder that I climbed and the success that I've achieved, and as Mobin pointed out, uh, the success that our employees are looking to achieve, the core element of, of, of all of this is understanding and knowing each one of your employees. Uh, in the banking world, we call it KYC, know your client. Mm. I think we should come up with KYE, know your employee. Mm. Because only once we understand the true aspiration of what our employees require, what is the path that they need to travel. Um, Mobin spoke of a coach. I think the importance of a mentor, someone who's achieved the success that you're looking to achieve. If we're in a position to actually direct and guide one of our employees to hook up with potential mentors. And I think in our community, talking from an Islamic perspective, there are so many Muslims who've achieved success in, in, in a whole variety of industry and in business. And I think, wouldn't it be fantastic if we can hook up our youth and our youngsters um, with potential mentors who can guide them through their journey of the corporate world. Okay. And inshallah, and one day also, you know, achieve the success that they're looking to achieve. You know, I, I, I like the idea of uh, almost passing the baton, as it were, to younger people so that they grow, mm -hmm. right? I know at one time the mantra was, customer is king. And I think it was Richard Branson who said, your staff is king. Your staff is king. Because I don't want to elaborate, but I, I see that it resonates with you, Muhammad, right? Yes. And could you explain this, the staff is king? It's quite simple. Mm. So what we would do, instead of treating the customer as king, what I personally do is I treat my staff exceptionally well. I try. We try. I mean, you're never good enough yeah. in, in any case. You yeah. do your best. Yeah. However, you, it, it's a simple logic. If you treat your staff member well, your staff member is 99% in contact with your client. So the principle would be you look after your, your team player, and your team player in turn treats your customer as king. Does that make sense? So as, as, a, as a business owner, you're not in, in contact with your customer all the time. Treat your, treat your staff well. Let that information, let that goodness come through your staff member and pass over to your customer, which okay. makes logical sense. Even a tea girl yeah. is treated with utmost respect for simpleness, is that if you walk into one of our retail sites, you're actually going to question the lady. How are you, ma'am? Who is the owner of the business? How is the company? I mean, take a simple, you know, like if you, if you have a shuttle service dropping off a client, have you ever been transported by a particular company in the past, uh, Idris? Yes, I have been. So you would have a conversation with that driver. How is this company? And if that particular driver gives you negative feedback, mm. what's your impression on that company? First impressions are lasting impressions. So you could have this massive, beautiful, uh, building and, and all the bells, toys and whistles. But if that particular employee speaks negatively about the company, you're going to question the integrity of the company. So the simple principle would be is 
treat your people well. Look after your staff, and your staff will treat your customer as king. Yes, uh, I really, really enjoyed, and I'm sure you did, uh, the, the first uh, segment. And it's quite clear there are a few things that I have extracted from what has been said. And naturally, we cannot be exhaustive. And I think it, it helps you to reflect on who you are, how you are perceived. It will make a huge difference. I think some of the things that we discuss is the whole issue of not treating people as commodities, giving them dignity, recognizing them, also growing, as it were, and having a particular vision. Because it is through them that you are able, inshallah, to drive this to a common goal, inshallah. We'll be back immediately after this. Time is now. Time is now. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Alhamdulillah, often, you know, when you are discussing things in front of the camera, your discussion goes at a particular level. And often outside the camera, we have perhaps far more stimulating discussion because it comes from the heart and real issues are being discussed. And one of the sentiments expressed in the break was that not all employees do what's expected of them. So the purpose of the program is to make each one of you to reflect as an employer, what kind of employer are you? As an employee, what is your commitment? What is your professional level in that particular company? And the whole idea is, inshallah, to create a happy balance so that company together as a collective, you can do what is right. In the end, it's about amana, it's trust. You may not be monitored, but Allah looks at you, looks at your commitment and your loyalty, inshallah. It is our earnest prayer, inshallah, that the workplace is transformed, is a happy place when each particular individual contributes to the corporate good, inshallah. Mobin, uh, one of the things that we need to also speak about is the fact that today we are living at a time when often there seems to be a disparity between what are the employer's expectations and the employee's expectations of the same company. And why is there such a gap? I think it boils down to one, the system of that organization, and is there a job spec that makes you understand what's expected of you? But two, are you willing to do what is expected of you and follow that through together with the vision of this company? Are you prepared to go, to see, see the bigger picture and go to that end? And most employees may not be willing to do that because they have what I say and maybe what you hear could be two different things or what we write and what you read could be two different things. So they must want to be passionate about achieving this or being more, creating that value. Because to have more, they must become more. So if they don't create that value, that obviously will create a big problem and a disparity between what I believe and what they believe. Because they may think that coming to work would be, I invested eight hours or 10 hours and I've invested overtime. Are you counting time or are you counting impact? Mm -hmm. So if I'm counting impact and you counting time, already that graph is going in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mobin, uh, from what I've gathered, right, uh, you talk, he talks about a vision. Mm -hmm. Now, how important, Aman, from your perspective, is to have a proper orientation and induction program so that there's a commonality and understanding where the person that is your potential employee is able to ask you questions, to interrogate what you are saying, so that there can be this creative energy for the betterment of the company? I love your question and I'll tell you why. Recently I had the opportunity to fly with the chairman of Shell South Africa and um, he imparted quite an important uh, message to us. And his thoughts were that if I had to have an employee who had the total secrets of my company all bound in a beautiful lever arch file and he left my company and he went off to start off another company or joined a competitor company, would he achieve, achieve the same success that our company had achieved? And in almost all instances, the answer would be no, he would not, because culture beats strategy. Mm -hmm. So the induction that you talk about is so important because what you're actually inducting your employee into is you're inducting the employee into the culture 
of the organization that you bring the, uh, the, the, the employee into. And also, you know, Mobin touched on some interesting points where the expectation that we as employers have of our employees. One of the key points, and you know, the topic of our show here is uh, issues in the workplace, is the element of honesty. Because when we're having that initial interview where the person is actually responding to an advert that you put in the paper and they come with a CV, and one question I love to ask is the element of proactivity, which once again ties into what Mobini is talking about. And I ask uh, people, you know, are you a proactive individual? And they'll give me numerous examples of how they will be proactive when they take the job. And the interesting thing is that maxim that the new broom sweeps clean. Mm. It's interesting to notice with new employees that come into organization, how long does that broom do a full sweep before it starts? And the term I use, getting dipped into the pot of culture of mediocrity, when the person then kind of settles down after that curve is achieved. And the truly gifted employees are the ones who keep on pushing the limit, where when you hire someone, the job spec that Mobin also speaks about is an element of meeting expectation for joining my organization. But a true stellar employee is gonna to work towards exceeding expectation, and then one day, inshallah, significantly exceeding expectation. So for me, and as you point out, the element of induction into your corporation, your business, no matter how big or small it is, is critical because you're imbibing the values and the spirit. And I think more importantly, the element of the purpose of the business that you're in, because you're getting an employee who is essentially becoming part of a power team that's gonna do things differently in the business and in the corporate world that we live in. It's all about competition, about being the best. So you wanna get employees that are gonna deliver the absolute okay. best. You know, I, I, it makes a lot of sense, but I have, uh, I wanna say an issue, but I'd like to hear your quick uh, response mm -hmm. to this. One of the things that we find today in many, many companies, you find that some people are very, very explicit. This is what you're required to do. Yes. And I don't want, there's no place for your autonomy in terms of creativity. I found something quite, uh, but I don't know whether you're going to celebrate this. In fact, there is a company in the United States of America, down south, Louisiana, right? <laughs> in that company, they pay you $100 for making a mistake. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And you know what? Initially, I said, what? Are they gone off? You know, if I was working there, they'd probably go bankrupt. I said, boss, I made a mistake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. But they say, as long as the mistake is geared towards improvement of the company, you're using some kind of creativity. So what I'm asking this question, do you think sometimes in our companies, we are stifling employees who come with creative ideas and you come there, they come there and say, well, you know what, I'll do what I'm expected to do, call us, and I'm not going to promote anything to the company. How important is creativity in terms of this and it, uh, autonomy? Creativity is always great. However, you have a structure, you have a system, you have a job description as an employee. So long as it's within the bounds of your KPI that is completed, thereafter to be creative, awesome. So, okay. Mohammed, I, I think that confusing uh, and, and uh, confusing creativity with delivery yeah. is is an important point because the point that the point that pops up is efficiency. Okay. So, if you can creatively deliver with efficiency, meaning cutting down unnecessary time, then you will excel in your job. And I think yeah, that's yeah. where I interrupted you. But from mm. another point of view, I mean, Steve Jobs would take a 16-year-old, put him in the company because he said, some other 16-year-old is going to wake up tomorrow and beat me. So he puts this guy in the company and says, what would you do differently? And then these 16-year-olds would come back and said, I don't like that. I like that. Change this. Move this. And that was the innovation behind Apple where he would take younger people. So much so we went to an event the other day and, and the guy said, it's soon not to take advice from younger people. And that's what Steve Jobs done. So if you have this creative force, I sometimes feel you are stifling him if you put him into the structure because this guy is the future. If you really look at the future of the world, it's this current generation and the ones before the millennials that are actually creating all this creativity. Where was social media 30 years ago? It wasn't here. And if somebody said, you'd be foolish to be doing business on WhatsApp or to be getting connections on social media, that's unprofessional. And maybe 20 years ago, many people would have said that. 
But that's exactly what they do today. Okay, you know, Mobin, there, there are two things uh, come to mind, and it's a good point that you raise. If you look at the whole saga with Kodak, what happened to them? Mm -hmm. They were tops. It was in the lips of everyone, right? But they did not embrace change because change is the only permanent thing in life. And I'll add one more point to this, and I think it's part of it because from my own understanding with lots of people in the workplace, they say, you know what, no one listens to me or elicits an opinion from me. I want to participate. The one is, and I'll end it off here, and alhamdulillah, it's so exciting in terms of the different things you are talking about because we are here not in terms of conforming to something or any degree of uniformity. We need to share their different perspectives to the same thing. Henry Ford, when he employed his people, he told them quite clearly, I only want your hands. But the Toyota model is different, where the person, even sweeping there, can stop the conveyor belt if something is wrong. So everyone participates in the vision of this whole place. So alhamdulillah, uh, my beloved uh, viewers, so it's quite clear that in terms of the workplace, we need to understand who we are working with. Understand the talents of those individuals. Give them an opportunity to grow because one of the things, and we'll talk about it uh, in the next segment, how important is it for a person working in the company knows that he can climb up the ladder in terms of his own personal growth and he can contribute towards decision making. We'll be back immediately after this. Time is now. Time is now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this segment, uh, let us see it from the perspective of the employees. Just imagine you're an employee. What will make you happy in the workplace? And I know, Muhammad, in your initial segment, and uh, Allah bless you, I like to believe all of you, also it resonates with you in terms you emphasize relationships and a whole range of things from the perspective of the employee. For example, would you call your employees to have tea and say to them, you know what, tell me what you think. Are we going the right direction? Do you have any ideas? You know, are you happy? So yes. for, for, uh, how important is for, for you to understand that the needs of each employee is different, that you understand exactly that you want them to be happy at the workplace? Uncle Idris, a happy employee will equal a happy client. If the employee is happy, he's gonna, especially if the guy is in sales or if he's in production or anything, a happy employee will give you a good product at the end of the day. Um, to add on to, to an employee's point of view, everybody wants to walk into a place that's warmth, mm. kindness, mm. love, respect. Those are basic qualities that each and every one of us need to have. <coughs> Humility. As an employer, we need to speak correctly to our people. Yes, there is a simple, you gotta be firm, but fair. And that's a simple principle that we implement in our lives. Yeah. Firm, but fair. Yeah. Okay, in, in terms of this firm and being fair, uh, how do you ascertain that you are, <laughs> that you are firm no need to find out, I'm sure you know that, right? Yeah. But in terms of fair, in terms of equity and whatnot, Aman? Um, I think the, the, the core word here is, is, is gotta be around respect, but respect both ways. The, the respect that the employee has for the employer, and I think more importantly, the respect that the employee has for the organization. Because um, one of the root causes of a lot of dissension and maybe even um, unhappiness in terms of um, where you, you said if we're in the shoes of the employee, is that generally employees, <clears throat> if they haven't prepared and, and they have this notion that I'd like to become the manager or I'd like to become a senior manager in the organization, but there's a critical, a critical component that I believe is lacking and this is over the years of experience. It is in, incumbent for the employee to have a personal development plan for himself. And in this plan, together with assistance of a colleague or even a senior manager, the plan can outline his path to the next step in his career. And I find, unfortunately, a lot of employees have not taken the time to develop a personal development plan. And personal development plans are beautiful because they don't only have to operate in the corporate space. They operate at home, they operate in your spirituality, 
But I think bringing it back to the workplace, it's, it's, it's more pertinent and relevant that an employee understands where he wants to go. Because when the employer and the employee sit down to evaluate the employee's performance over a certain period, it becomes quite difficult to assess how much you've grown or what you've developed if there was no start and finite endpoint. So one of the key things that I like to discuss with the people that, that report into me is that do you want to live the same life 75 times and call it a life? Or would you like to grow and live 75 years? And I think if you bring that back into the workplace, it's quite relevant because you could ruthlessly execute on whatever is given, you, given to you all the time, but show no signs of growth. And I think these are all key factors that eventually lead to frustration, and that's how issues sometimes arise. I think it's, it's more of reverse engineering, knowing what you want, and then asking the next, I think the module that's missing here is, what do I want and how do I get there? So the how do I get there part, nobody knows because I think a lot of the time, you just think it's supposed to happen if I invest the time, and if I've been here for five years, I should get the job because somebody else got it in five years, but it's what you do in that five years against a plan of what you wanted. What do I want and how do I get there? And if you, I think you close that mm -hmm. gap, mm -hmm. it's probably, in, I mean, you know, as a man think it, they say so it is. Yeah, correct, know? yes. So I think it's just about impossible for you not to get there. You may be uh, out by a month or two more, 10% of the time mm -hmm. or 20% of the time, but you're probably gonna get there if you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. You can't wanna drive to Cape Town and you just don't have a map to get there and then hope that you're gonna get there in eight hours. It just doesn't work. We embrace a culture, uh, it's a Japanese culture called Kaizen, continuous improvement. But you spoke of Toyota, that's Toyota. Yeah. 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 That, that's what exactly yeah. what the difference between Toyota and Ford is. So what, what we do is I simplified it and we call it NSI now. Hmm. Never stop improving. I like it. Right, and then we put another one, NSL. Never stop learning. Okay. Okay. So it's a simple thing. If, if, if an employee understands that, NSI, never stop improving. Every day, just 1%. At the end of the year, you got 365% improved. A little bit, consistently, you know, every day. Incremental growth. <laughs> you know, every day. You know, guys, I'm smiling. I said, you know, I could use it in my marriage seminar. <laughs> NSL, never stop loving. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, th those things help, you know? Because uh, uh, every company mm. has a, a corporate mm. culture, yes. and that's important. And you know what? Let's look at it at a very, very human level. Yeah. The other day, uh, I was uh, at the beachfront, and I just engaged a conversation with this couple. Just, you know, I'm that gregarious social guy, <laughs> you know, said hello uh, uh, to him. And then he, he, uh, I, I introduced myself. So he told me, you know, uh, I just was retrenched. I mean, look at that. I was retrenched. I worked for 30 years in the company, and my boss said he cannot afford me anymore. He said, I'm spending time with my family. I mean, these are sad stories. Yeah. Sad stories. You know what I'm saying to you? So if our objective in the end, of course, naturally, you get those guys who are exploited, you know? Yeah. Never on time. Got an excuse, you know, like one person was uh, in a particular profession. Whenever he didn't come to school, or even when he was a student, he never came to school. What happened? He said, my uncle died, my auntie died. So one of my friends, who was his teacher, said to him one day, I'm sure you've got no family left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, I think that's powerful. It's what you want to add on. Idris, you know, you asked about, you question about, an em about what employees are looking for. Mm. What about what employers want? Yeah. If I may just... Yeah, please, please. Okay, from my side, very simple. Mm. QQS. Mm. Quality, quantity, mm. and the right spirit. Okay? So, so long as your team is delivering quality, mm. quantity, mm. and the correct spirit, mm. that business will thrive and flourish. Mm. And that's all us as business people are looking for. So, okay? but, but, when a, you, when you, but when you say this, right, for me, Yes. Uh, uh, is there, uh, you, and you spoke about measurement earlier on and all that. Yes. So do they understand now, this quality is excellent. All of us have an understanding. This is quantity acceptable. And when you speak about the spirit is something intangible. All of us have different personalities, right? And how do you help them to grow? 
Okay, it, it obviously starts off with you as your view. Firstly, business is a game, mm. okay? Business is a team sport, and I look at business as a game. Mm. It, it's simple, mm. okay? You gotta structure your business out correctly. Uh, if you were to compare it to a soccer field, your goalkeeper has a position. He's not allowed to go out and go and score a goal. I mean, if he really needs to and be like the Pirates keeper that did what he had to do a couple of weeks ago, that was something exceptional. However, his position is there and he's got to stay in his position and serve his purpose. Okay? So he's, he's got to, we, we call it a hatting process. Mm. So in simple terms, a job description. So long as your job, dis what, I, what I realize on employees is that our expectations are not communicated correctly. So simplify the complexity by you as a business owner actually writing down what your expectations are, okay? The guy's not a mind reader. If you write it down and you communicate it on a regular basis, okay? We, what we normally do is we give him a, a, a contract and there's your job description and go. No, what I, what I, what I do on a regular basis is I, if I see an employee slipping, I call him back in and I bring his job description and I try and explain that job description correctly to him so he understands his position. Inshallah, uh, I think it's an important point. We need to explore this further in the first part of the last segment. What do employers want? And that's, I think, the important aspect. And Inshallah will give them uh, perhaps some kind of guideline. And there are lots of, alhamdulillah, great ideas that are coming here. And perhaps maybe there's a need, you know, for uh, greater interaction amongst peers in terms of learning from the craft and learning from each other so that we become better, decent human beings, being more productive. Yes, I'm sure all of you agree that the discussions have been stimulating and exciting. And I'm sure you are saying, my gosh, tomorrow, I'm going to put a smile on my dial and I'm going to quantity, quality, and come with the right spirit, long as it's not methylated spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Time is now. Time is now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Really, am I looking excited? The discussions have been animated, full of enthusiasm. And yes, the purpose of Inspirate is to inform, to heal, and transform. Allah forbid, you tell us one day, I heard these three dynamic uh, people chatting there. I was so inspired. I said, brother, sister, you were inspired. What did you change in your life? He said, nothing. Then you've not been inspired. As the brother said, it's getting hot out here. That means you are perspiring, my brothers and sisters. Take ownership of your life. Yes, you know what? We, we had lots of discussion. Now, in terms of, you know, the initial two or three minutes, let's, as a collective, let's talk about what do employers want and then give a message to our viewers who are searching for answers. Some of them are looking downtrodden and they want the answers and they believe, you know, as I do, I find the discussion stimulating. I hope you found the interaction also stimulating. Okay. First point I'd like you to give is value. Warren Buffett puts it nicely. Your first point when, you, when you're in business, is choosing your team players correctly, okay? So if you choose the right players, you're gonna get the right results. And you coach them and you mentor them, you get the right result. Okay, so Warren Buffett's words are, when you're choosing employees, choose on number one, intelligence, energy, and integrity. If they don't have the last one, integrity, don't even bother with the first two. That's the first point, okay? Uh, secondly, any company that, that is having chaos, for example, if you look at your business and, and you, you got chaos every day, mm. okay? You con continuously putting out fires. Go back into your org structure, if you even have one. If you don't have one, immediately do an org structure, okay? With that org structure, write up correct job descriptions for your employees, okay? And going one step even further, Try and figure out a measurement tool, okay, that you can measure your employees on a regular basis. But moment, I want to stop you there. I'll yes. tell you why. You spoke initially about Warren Buffett speaking about choosing the right person. Yes. There is a lovely book that I would recommend to the viewers. It's called Abolish Appraisals. They said no matter how objective it is, it really creates dynamics in relationships. It creates bitterness amongst friends because 
there's always hurt. And they also argue, if you choose correctly, there's no need for appraisals. And yes. it's a very powerful point. Of course. So, but you are saying two things. You say, choose correctly, then you're also having performance, you know, instrument. Yeah. Right, uh, Aman? So, so, so I, I, I look at it slightly differently, and uh, I, I pulled in the three A's. So initially, in, in uh, the environment that I come from, auditing and consulting, the two A's that were prevalent was, one, the most important is aptitude. So if you don't have the aptitude for the kind of work that you're being employed for, it's never going to work. So aptitude is important. But the interesting thing about aptitude is that if you don't have it, you can go on a course and you can learn it and you can apply it. Right, correct. So aptitude is a given. Mm -hmm. Then the second one was, and I think the, probably the most important, is attitude. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the correct attitude, you're never going to get anything done. Correct, yes. You could be a professor of mathematics, you could be a professor of accounting or whatever. If you, if you don't apply yourself with the correct attitude, nothing is going to happen. And then when I moved into a more corporate structure in the banking world, I found that a third A emerged. And the third A is ambition. So when taken in proper proportion, and I'm not saying equal proportion, I'm saying in proper proportion, aptitude together with Aptitude, uh, with attitude and with ambition will deliver an excellent employee to that organization. And <clears throat> with all the discussion about plans and writing things down, in the 1980s when the Summer Olympics were in uh, Los Angeles yeah. in 1984, if I'm not uh, wrong yeah. with my dates, Carl Lewis, who was the preeminent sprinter at the time, uh, yes. did an uh, advert for Pirelli tires. Yeah. And off the starting blocks, yeah. there was a picture of Carl Lewis in the starting yeah. blocks, yeah. but when they showed his feet, he had stiletto high heels on. Mm. And the little caption at the bottom, which lives with me forever, is that power is nothing without control. Mm -hmm. And I think if we bring that all back into our organizations and we take it from an employer's perspective and from an employee's perspective, if you don't have <clears throat> the correct dimensions for what you're hoping to achieve mm -hmm. in the correct measure of attitude, aptitude, and ambition, we're going to have problems in the workplace. Okay, you know, uh, the, uh, the point that I take mm -hmm. from what both of you are saying is that we also need to read books and grow mm -hmm. as individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mobin, I want to refer to a book, and uh, I'm sure you uh, came across it, whatever. It's called Moving from Good to Great and Built to Last. I found the books very, very powerful, right? And, I, and, and you find, and this is an important thing, that whenever you quote anyone, if things have a universal truth, they ring true, you'll find it in the Quran or in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So in this book, he argues, uh, moving from good to great, he likens a company to a bus. You're moving in a particular direction. Because sometimes you might have to tell the person, you sit here, the driver goes to the back, so on and so forth. But he makes a very telling point. Because sometimes you've got to stop the bus and ask someone, it could be even the CEO of the company, to disembark because he doesn't share in that vision. Are we prepared sometimes as employers to make those decisions and how do we make those decisions? I think we're talking about good to great. I think every employer mm. and every employee should read the guy called Jim Collins. Jim Collins, yes. And if I stand under correction, I think FNB uses Jim Collins as well very, very closely. I've interacted it's, it's with... entwined in our, in our overall I've, strategy. I've interacted <clears throat> with Jim Collins. Mm. And I can promise you one thing. If there's anybody that knows how to take an organization from A to wherever it needs to go, it's Jim Collins. Because everything is built as good is the enemy of great. Correct, yes. So if everybody, you know, it comes back to what I said earlier. To have more, you need to become more. So if you take those lessons from his book and the employer takes it, because leadership is changing every day. This is the 21st century. The way you led in the 1960s may not be relevant today. So you need to learn as well and update your, your leadership skill because your employee is changing. Every generation that's now coming, you've got a new employee. So number one, update your leadership skill. So those books help. As an employee, number two, read the similar books and understand how do you become more? Mm -hmm. How do you deliver better? Mm -hmm. Because if you create more value by default, you will, the, I think the universe has a very fair system. Mm -hmm. There's no shortcut in the universe, no matter who, whether you're the CEO, whether you're the director, whoever you are. If you misbehave in the, in, the, in the universe, if you're the owner of the company, it'll close you down, you learn the lesson, and you'll come back again. If you're the employee, 
the company will find a way to get rid of you. It may not be the company, it's the system of the universe. And then you'll go and learn a lesson and you'll come back again. To prevent all of that, you learn greater skills that make you more, that make you deliver more value. And in the delivery of that value, you will find greater positions in the world and greater success in that what you're looking for. Uh, excellent, excellent, right? Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I don't know, you know, I sometimes have the giggles, you know, I'm just thinking. <laughs> my dad said to me uh, some years ago, I must never open a shop because my heart is too soft, you know. <laughs> in fact, uh, I remember I got a customer who came to our shop, <clears throat> general dealers. So I whispered, I said to him, like, Mobin, you see Musa Patel there at the bottom? He's slightly cheaper than us. <laughs> 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 I was that kind of person. But anyway, you know, uh, it's a lot of uh, good value that is inherent in what is being said, right? Now, has a takeaway message for the viewer, whatever it is, because I know many of them are looking for answers. They want to know. Not all of us are in a particular position where, uh, you know, they're given the latitude to grow and so on and so forth. What is something compelling that is practical, something that can energize them at work, you know? Well, what would you like to tell them, Mohamed? Mohamed. I would um, park my ego, okay? And um, advise employers to have humility, kindness, love, and respect. And that will... Uh, radiate it, it's a universal good energy okay you'll actually attract better in your life nobody likes to deal with and with a, a negative human being negativity a negative attitude as an employer is only going to give you a negative end result as well nobody said don't be tough don't be firm okay however in the same token you've got to have compassion and understanding for your employees as well. In a moment. Uh, uh, Idris, I, know, I know you're ready to go, brother. I'm all yours. Brother. <laughs> Idris, it's very simple. When you step into an organization, no matter how difficult my life is at home or anywhere else, what I do is it's just a little trick that I, that I have. And if you want me just to give a value, I have a hat. Okay, so I've got a family man hat. And I'm a I hope you're not man, a very like mine. Eh? Right? The family man hat, my yeah. wife bullies me at home. Yeah. Okay, my businessman hat. Don't even think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when I when I would get to work, obviously leave home, I, I, I switch my, my family, I put on my, my businessman hat, obviously on my way to work, and I leave home problems at home. And I switch to a business zone. Um, my advice to, to, to people or well, business people, don't bring your business, don't bring your home problems into your business and with employees as well. Don't bring your home problems into work as well. And vice versa for business uh, owners, when you're going home, don't bring your work problems home. Okay, but you know what, there are two things. I think I just need to mention these two points. In your initial responses about humility, kindness, caring, and compassion, that's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? But the second point that you make and something, I have a different perspective on it because sometimes we are emotional beings Sometimes you could come home through some kind of trauma. You at least can, the person can say, I know, I can speak to my employer. He listened to me, he gave me the pastoral care. That also is important. Aman? Yeah, so <clears throat> at the end of the day, you know, we're dealing with human beings. Um, they're soft and uh, you deal with these issues. And I think all of us sitting in the panel here today currently are dealing with an issue with an employee or maybe employees feel a certain way towards us. So. To keep it simple from my side, my closing message is, if you do what you've always done, you're always gonna get the same result. Mm. And I know you love talking about change. Mm. So you gotta do things differently in order to get the different results. And you know, it may sound simple, but if you want change, there's gotta be effort that's inserted into that formula. If there's no effort applied, forget about getting any kinds of change. So I think the effort comes two ways as well from the employer and from the employee side. And I think once we understand that, once we get past the vi vision of the company, once we get past the mission mm. of the company, we come to the purpose of the company. Mm. And I think once collectively the employer and the employee understand this purpose that we're there for, we'll get the change that we're looking for. Will we? <clears throat> it's very hard to continue and I have two counterparts <laughs> that, that, that deliver as well as they do. Alhamdulillah. But on my side is employers, Real Madrid doesn't pay 100 million pounds for a player for fun. Mm. 
Mm. They do it because they realize the right people mm. move things forward. Mm. So employers find the right people, take care of them, grow a company. Employees add more value. Yes, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, there you have it. I had the good fortune, Allah's blessing, to go to Uzbekistan. I went to the most successful carpet dealer. And you can imagine the intensive work these people do. It's blood, sweat, and tears sitting in a particular position. So I asked him what is his philosophy, and he said something I've never come across anywhere from any book. He said, every morning, I meet with everyone, and I just share a joke with them. That's all. I don't lecture them. I just share a joke with them. I make them smile. That's what I do. No lecturing. And I thought that was powerful because many people do not know how to smile. For many people, the workplace is their family. So there you have it, my beloved uh, viewers. It is my hope and prayer that when you die as an employer, your employees will pray for you and say, Ya Allah, what a humble person. He gave me dignity. It was through him that I was able to support my family. Please forgive him. How nice an employer will say, Ya Allah, forgive this employee. He was so committed. He was, he was my eyes. I could trust him completely with my family. Please forgive him. So in the end, if we can really leave an indelible mark in the hearts and minds, whether you are a subordinate or a superordinate, inshallah, I have no doubt then we are moving in the right place. Remember, the philosophy of spirit, inspirate rather, is to do it now. And don't be naughty. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.